<laughs> oh my god, in the middle of the quiz? Oh wow, this is fantastic. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh wow, that is... That is that is the best way. <laughs> Dealing with a bully. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, let's save this. <laughs> Game number 676. Warm by Crispy Cat. If you want to check it out, it's at crispycat.h.io. This is a kinetic novel, is what they call it. As I'm not sure what a kinetic novel is. I imagine it's similar to a visual novel. The only way to find out is to actually play it. The link is in the down below. style is fantastic the colors are amazing those little details but not overly detailed the color transition from the dark to light apparently this is one of the um, older games of um, by by this group when I posted it about it on social media I think one of the devs uh, replied to that saying saying that this is a blast from the past. So it must be a nostalgic experience for them to to think about this game. Hi Shelly. Let's see, let's see how the artwork in, like, let's explore the artwork and the story. Oh, there's a menu in the corner for some reason. Oh, this menu. Okay. Huh. Look at the little, um, ice, the, the snow, um, the snowflake designs on the, on the thing. That's pretty cool. Oh, wow. That's a cool way to start. <laughs> like this, this desolate thing. Pretty cool. Still cold air. An expansive white world. An endless cold blue sky. And me, a single solitary dot of color. Lying in the middle of it all. I lie on my back, my arms out, staring silently into the sky. I don't know what I'm looking for up there. Maybe nothing, but I can't take my eyes away. Can't really move or do anything at all. Not because I'm pinned down, but because I just don't feel the need to. I don't want to. They got art. Got art. Good use of lights. All these faded spots are really nice.
truth be told, I don't even know why I'm here or why I'm lying down. I should be cold, but all I feel is numbness. I think my body has gotten used to it. I make no effort to get up. I probably should. I'll freeze to death if I stay out here. But even as I think that, I can't bring myself to care. I know I should move, but I can't take my make my limbs work. But it's fine, I'm used to this. I don't even feel the cold, not really. It's all just numbness by this point. My breath floats above me in clouds. If I was looking, I know it would block out the sun. And it's the only part of the view that changes. Just white fog drifting further and further away. I don't know how long I've been here. The unchanging world, the cold, the lack of real energy. I'm used to it all. It's just how it is. And yet again, I can't make myself care. But does it even matter, really? Oops. I keep my eyes closed, taking a deep breath through my nostrils, and I slowly let it out, letting the numbing cold overtake me. Dronan, what was that? <laughs> Leroy mood breaking Jenkins. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, I got your um, got your updated guide. I didn't open it yet. I'm gonna open it when we um, actually play the game. So thank you for making uh, making an updated guide for me. That was a dream? That's an interesting dream. Oh my god, look at the curtains. This, this, the blue and the pink and the purple. It's so perfect. This thing is so perfect. And the hints of green and yellow. Oh, this thing, this art is so good. Let's, let's take a moment to appreciate it. I wish most of our environments were di this color coordinated. It's hard to find things matching this well. I don't like m most furniture and, and color stuff in, in stores nowadays. It's too... It's not nice like this. Huh. Yeah, really, this is really cool. My alarm clock beeps cheerfully in my ear. What alarm clock is cheerful? I've not met any alarm clock that's actually cheerful. That's that's a myth. Too cheerfully. <laughs> I groan and bury my face in my pillow. It keeps beeping. Okay, I'm awake, I'm awake. It's not that I don't like getting up in the morning. I do, I really do. It's just that I hate the way my alarm completely decimates the quiet. Decimates, that's such a powerful word for this. I'd prefer if it could just wake up quietly, slowly, like birds do, knowing to open their eyes at sunrise. And depending on the bird, but yeah, it's, it's like from human's perspective, birds probably sound pretty quiet, starting up. But I can't do that. I've tried, set my alarm for vibrate once, and I just slept through it. Also depends on the vibration and the person, I guess. But yeah, it's um... I've slept through alarms too, so... Mm -hmm. 
Groaning in irritation again, I sit up and tap the reset button. Oh, oh, that is such an effective way to do this. Do you see all that? Like the, the music stopped as soon as the alarm clock was switched off. Blessed silence. I head to the window and open the curtains. Oh, look at the light effect. It's so cool. Oh my god. I really appreciate the light stuff in this. In this. Uh, in the art style. Cold morning lights hits me all at once. Making me squint. Once my eyes adjust, I look down to the streets below. It's still a bit early, too early for most kids my age to be outside yet. My classmates are all probably still asleep. The early risers are eating breakfast, I bet. Speaking of breakfast, I hear, I hear a distant clinking of silverware. Dad's awake already, too. But that's no surprise, he's always gotten up earlier than I have. Come to think of it, I've never figured out why, when he wakes up exactly. No matter how early I get up, he's there to greet me and wish me a good day at school. When I was younger, I wondered if he ever even slept. To be honest, sometimes I still wonder. <laughs> Seems so happy. The kitchen's all yellow with, again, a little bit of blue and a little bit of pink. That hair is so long and so full. Like with Sailor Moon, the hair's uh the the hair is long but it's really thin compared to this. The dad has a huge belly. I, I haven't, I don't often see people drawn like this. Like with a, with a, with a dad body. Dad looks up as I enter the kitchen. He's standing over the stove, stirring something in a pot. From the smell, I can tell it's rice porridge. Now the sniff confirms he's added chocolate to it. Rice porridge with chocolate? That sounds so interesting. Cooking with chocolate. I don't think I've ever heard of that. I mean, baking with chocolate, yes, but I haven't heard cooking with chocolate. Good morning, sweetie. Morning, Dad. I stand on tiptoe to give him a hug, then head to the fridge. Your bento is on the second shelf. Thank you. Sure enough, there it is, a little box wrapped in pink and yellow cloth. A little cuter than I would like, but Dad bought it for me. I can't say no or buy a plainer cloth, can I? As I pull it out, Dad keeps talking. I thought you would like a treat today, so it's fried chicken for your meat. I feel myself smile despite myself. Thanks, Dad. I close the fridge, adjust my hold on my bento, and turn around. I'm off. Huh? Already? Dad puts the wooden spoon in the pot and follows me to the doorway. You meeting someone? No, I'm just helping out at school again. I see. Hey there, honeysuckle. Okay, thank you for the lurk. Yeah, the game's going well. I'm really appreciating the art style. I think this is one of the earlier games of the of this dev, of this group of people. So, 
It's got some, um, it's got some early game charms to them. I see. That sounds a little hurt. But you're not going without breakfast, are you? You know, breakfast the most important meal of the day, especially for a girl your age. Seven-year-olds need a good meal in the morning. Dad, I'm 11, you know that. He laughs. I feel some of the guilt that settled over me, uh, that settled over me fade. I'll eat some bread at school. It's fine. But it's supposed to be colder than usual today. I'd rather you have something hot to start your day with. I'll be fine. Dad just stares at me, chewing on the inside of his cheek. But then he finally speaks again. If you have to leave now, at least take some with you. I wait as he heads back to the kitchen. A moment later, he returns with a thermos full of rice porridge, pressing it to my, into my hands. There, make sure you eat before your class starts. You can buy yourself bread like usual if you want, but make sure you eat this. Despite his smile, his voice is stern. I know he means business. Okay, okay, I will. Seemingly satisfied, Dad kisses the top of my head as I slip my shoes and coat on. Have a good day, sweetheart. You too, I'm off now. With the door closing behind me, I'm back on my own. The streets are still quiet, stretching out all around. I don't mind though, I like this time of day. It's part of why I get up so early in the first place, because of the quiet. Um, <coughs> oh, it's interesting. The windows, one of them is blue and the other one's yellow. Because of the blinds, I think. But the color effect is interesting. There's a theme of cold and warm going on throughout all the art. A few steps away from my house, I stop and take out the thermos. Even though I don't feel colder than usual, I might as well have a little something in my stomach now. What's the harm? Normally, I don't mind waiting until school, but since Dad did go to this trouble, I tilt back the thermos and take a small drink bite. A uh, drink bite, huh? A drink bite of the rice porridge. I like that word. A drink bite. That's what we should call uh, when we are eating soup. A drink bite. Especially when the soup is from a, from a cup. It's still hot, so much that I have to open my mouth to let the winter air cool cool it a bit. As it cools my breath and the steam fogging up in front of me, I realize it's pretty good. The chocolate is rich so I can actually taste it, instead of it just adding color. Some of the chocolate hasn't melted yet, so there are little pieces in it. Really, Dad's spoiling me today. I chew a bit and swallow, screw the lid back on the thermos and continue to school. Always wanted to, I always walked to school by myself since the second grade. This is a quiet, safe town, so there's never been any problem here. There. And it's nice to walk alone, too. The quiet is comforting. The emptiness makes me feel like I'm on my own world. It's a nice break before class starts, and I have to deal with all those, all the noise, bright lights, and... I just like this time of day. Feeling like I have my own world, instead of being a tiny part of a giant crowded one. It's not that I don't like people, I don't mind them at all. But it's nice to feel like I have a good reason to be alone. It feels better, better than the alternative. It's still so early in the day, so I take my time, keeping my steps slow and small. I get to school with plenty of time to spare as usual. I might be the first one here, even before the club goers. Not that I'd know for sure, of course. I've never seen one anyone else before I reached the classroom. And even if I did, nobody would really talk to me. Step through the gates, beginning my walk across the grounds. Ah, uh, wait, no. Huh? Oh, this coat. Ah, uh, this coat is so cool. The girl stands directly in my path, frowning at her cell phone. 
Oblivious to my presence, she starts swiping her fingertip across the screen. Since she's facing me, she probably was on her way out of the gates or maybe she got turned around. It's probably the latter. This is such a small town that everyone knows everyone. And I definitely don't recognize this girl. She must be a transfer. She still doesn't notice me, just chewing on her lip as she taps at her phone. Was it? Was it that way or... Ah oh, jeez, this is the worst. Huh? She finally looks up, spotting me. Her entire being just lights up and she waves me over. Hey, uh, hey, hey, do you go to this school? You go to this school, right? Yeah, do you need help? As class leader, I can't ignore someone in need. I mean, not that I'd ignore her if I weren't class leader. She's clearly lost. Only a jerk wouldn't help. Yeah, the girl shows me her phone. I see a map from the school, clearly emailed by the principal. So I was right. She is a transfer. So I'm trying to get to the principal's office, but, um, get this. He laughs awkwardly. I kind of can't find it. Can you help me? Sure, that's easy. I take the phone from her, zooming in on one part of the map. I point to the doors with my fingertip. So we're here and the entrance is right in front of us. Really? I tried the door and nothing happened. Ah, uh, that's why she's wandering around outside. She probably thinks there's another way in, like the back. I shake my head. No, this early, only one of the doors is open. You have to open the one furthest on the left. They unlock the rest of them in half an hour. The girl just stares at me, confusion fading. I look back at her phone, gesturing for her to look. When you go through the door, just go down the hall on the left side. You'll find the principal's office about halfway down. Do you need me to walk you there? If she's a transfer, she might want the help, right? But the girl just waves her hand at me and takes back her phone. Nope, I think I can find it now. Left hall, I'll find it easy. Right? Thanks. She runs off without waiting for me to respond. I walk after her, watching as she hesitates in front of the doors before finding the leftmost one, as I said. She looks over her shoulder at me once more, waving while grinning broadly, before she skips inside. Huh, that was an unusual break from routine. I should have done the polite thing and introduced myself, I realize, but I guess it doesn't matter now. All the yellow! Miss Haruna. Ah, Shimizu. My teacher, Miss Haruna, looks up from her lesson plan as I walk through the door. Good morning. Good morning, what do you need me to do today? Miss Haruna makes a slight face. What does that mean, makes a face? I I've seen that expression many times. I never understand what it means. It's basically saying make a reaction, has a reaction. novel when the face is shown it make you know it, it's it's useful but I've seen it in in scripts you know in in story scripts over and over again I'm like um, so the actor just picks their own face <laughs> so basically makes a face is indicating in the script that their emotions show up on their face Not a lot, but if you could clap out the erasers a bit more, it'd be a big help. I don't think uh, Inu, um, is it Inui? Inui did it hard enough. Hmm. Clapping dusters. I nod and get started. So I grab the erasers and move to 
open a window, Miss Haruna keeps talking to me. You know, Shimizu, I don't, you don't have to do this every day. I'm the class leader, I have responsibilities. Besides, I don't mind helping a bit. I briefly shiver in the cold air that flows into the room and give the erasers a good hard clap. I'm used to it, it's fine. Hmm, you can still help me without coming in so early. Now, not that I don't appreciate the help, of course, but... Miss Haruna is a relatively new teacher at this school. When we began the school year, our first year of middle school, she had shyly explained she had only been teaching for two years before. This was her third year. Since she's so young, I sometimes it sometimes feels less like she's our teacher and more like our older sister. Or really, a young aunt. She's a great teacher, I like her. So I offer my help as part of my responsibilities as class leader. It's a win-win situation, really. She gets help before class starts and I get some extra peace and quiet. Not that I hate my classmates or anything, it's just... I give the erasers another hard clap, sending chalk dust into the air. It's just that it's easier to be by yourself when you're alone than when you're in a crowded room. I kind of figured that's what it was getting at all this time. It's fine though, I'm used to it. I just learned to enjoy the peace and quiet. I've clapped the erasers clean, polished a few desks, and made copies of tomorrow's math quiz when the first students start to filter in. Ms. Saruna excuses herself for a bit, and I head back to my desk. I take the opportunity to finish my rice porridge. The thermos has kept it hot, but it's cooled enough so I can eat it without burning myself. Everyone starts talking at their desks, gossiping and double-checking homework with one another, grabbing pencil cases. I keep to myself staying at my desk even when my breakfast is finished. All I do is take out my homework and look over it. The voices wash over me like a gentle wave, white noise. That is until... Please, you... I... I don't know... I look up from my teacher at my English paper to see a fa uh, familiar sight. Huh. Yu Ueda stands by her desk, fidgeting nervously. In front of her, her best friend, uh, Tomomi Inui, bows and presses her hands together pleadingly. Please, Yu, I'm begging you, just let me copy your homework. Despite their hushed voices, I can hear them perfectly. Then again, they have nearly the same conversation every day, so maybe I'm just supplying the script myself. Miss Haruna will find out we're going to get in trouble. And wait a minute, why didn't you do it yourself? We only had 10 questions and it was open book. Inuit toes at the floor, her head bowed and her hands twisting in a show of sheepishness. I got distracted by pretty, pretty soldier sparkles. They're talking about Sailor Moon. Uh. <laughs> it's a reference to Sailor Moon, I'm sure. Because the full name of Sailor Moon is Pretty Soldier Sailor Moon. I thought I'd rewatch the first episode for fun, and before I knew it, I was binging the entire thing. Yeah, you didn't do it because you were watching anime? But but that's what happened last time. I swear I didn't do it on purpose, you. But but you But before I knew it it was past my bedtime and I hadn't done a single problem. Inui goes back to her, begging. So please just let me do this. Aren't you my best friend? Don't you want me to pass? Of course I do, but Inui suddenly sniffles. It's loud and obnoxious. Look, I'm sorry I'm such a bad friend asking you to do this all the time. Her voice is quavery. Huh. That's an interesting word. Quavery. Tight as a violin string. 
he sniffs again and I understand if you never want to be friends again but if you could just help me where there is faltering I I don't want I don't not want to be friends I just I knew you can't ever forgive me not after all the times I've asked this but you just one more time you cared about me at all you <laughs> Inui punctuates her pleas with a tiny sob. I've had enough. This is just irritating. I slap down my homework on top of my desk and stalk over to the girls. Inui. Ueda and Inui look at me in shock. I guess they didn't notice I was here until I spoke up. Ueda flinches a bit, twisting her hands together anxiously. She has the decency to look embarrassed. Inoue just gapes at me like a fish. Her face and her eyes totally dry. I frown at her. Inoue, leave Ueda alone. You should have done your, the work yourself. Stop making Ueda do it, do it for you. I don't make her do it for me. She does her homework and then you copy it. Sounds like you have her to do all the work to me. Every day since the first grade, I've had to hear this exchange. Really, I'm amazed Inui has made it this far into school. But Ueda doesn't deserve this, I have to say something. And stop fake crying, it's annoying and it's not fooling anyone. <laughs> Inui promptly bursts into tears and runs into a corner of the room. Ueda hesitates, shifting her feet as she looks from Inui to me and then to Inui, then to me. And then she finally grabs her bag and rushes to the corner to comfort Inui. I sigh, watching her try to speak to her friend, but Inui just keeps shaking her head, wailing louder into her hands. Ueda tries a few more times to placate her and finally reaches into her school bag. Pulling out a piece of paper, she holds it in front of Inui's covered face and puts a hand on her arm. Inui immediately uncovers her face and with an audible shout of delight, grabs the paper. I sigh and head back to my seat. There's not a lot I can do, is there? I can talk to her all I want, but in the end, Inoue will just do as she pleases. I can't force her to stop bullying Ueda. And Miss Haruna can't stop her because she doesn't know. Because Inoue is so careful to not do it when Haruna, where Haruna can see. I can't even tell Miss Haruna about it myself because, well, how would that sound? Someone is cheating and bullying someone, but she only does it when your back is turned. And since Inoue changes her answers just enough from Ueda's, there's no proof of the cheating either. Miss Haruna can't go up to a student and accuse them of cheating. She'd get into huge trouble. All I can do is keep talking to Inoue when this happens and hope that someday it sticks. Though I'm starting to doubt it ever will. More students filter in. The noise level steadily increases. And suddenly I hear two more familiar voices. Have a good night, Jasmine. Hey, Megumi. I look up to see two more girls. Junko Kotobuki and Ami Fujita st uh, stands by my desk. They greet me with uh, bright smiles. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm a bit confused as to why they're talking to me. We were never really that close. My eyes land on the bandage on Kotobuki's face. Hmm, Kotobuki, did something happen? Huh? Oh, this? She briefly points at the brand band-aid and shakes her head. No, this is for fashion. I saw it online and the new issue in the new issue of Pop Berry. You just put them on your face like stickers, see? You pretend to be hurt for fashion? Kotobuki laughs. No, it's not pretending to be hurt. It's an accessory. Fujita pipes up. Like stickers for your face. Yeah, and you can't get fun shape. You can get fun shapes and colors too. You wanna try? I brought a box with me. No. Eh, you sure? You'd look cute. I am sure. The two exchange looks, smiles, fading. They look like they want to say more, but then someone calls out to them. 
With one more look at me, they drift off and I'm left alone again. Apart from Inoue, Kotoboki and Fujita have been the other two constants in my school life. All my other classmates have rotated through the years, but somehow those three have always been in a class with me. I think that might be part of why Kotoboki and Fujita talk to me so familiarly. We've always been in the same class, so in a way it's like we're friends. Or rather, they talk to me like I'm their friend. That might not be the entire reason though. Up until last year, our last, our last year of elementary school, we only exchanged greetings. But back then, I walked down the hall to the classroom, a stack of papers in my arms. It's a quiz day, and the teacher trusted me enough to make copies for him to pass out to us. Class will be starting soon, so I have to get them to him as fast as I can. However, as I start to move past the girls' bathroom, Hurry, hurry! I pause, hearing a familiar voice. Accompanying the whispered hurry is a crinkle of cell cellophane, the rustling of tissue paper. That's weird, it's coming from the bathroom too. Give me a drink of your... Give me a drink of your juice. Okay, not all of it. Hey, someone eating in there? That's gross. I set the papers down on the bench and fling open the door. <laughs> Go to Buki and Fujita look up at me from where they sit on the floor, caught red-handed. A bit literally in Kotobuki's case, as bean paste spill out of her anpan onto her fring fingers. Crumpled wrappers lay at their feet. A convenience store bag sits on the floor besides them. It looks like a picnic in here. The girls just stare at me, food halfway to their mouths. I stare back at them. A whole minute kick ticks by with nobody saying anything, but I have to ask. What are you two doing? Kotobuki blinks slowly. Eating? Like it's some kind of trick question. Why are you eating in the bathroom? Eh. Kotobuki lowers her snack. It's cleaner than you think? I know the bathrooms are clean. We have good janitors here. That's not the point. Why are you eating in here? Fujita hums a bit. Well, we were hungry and the bathroom was the closest private place to eat. Could eat in the classroom, you know? No way. Kotobuki sounds horrified. You're working in there. We'd just make a mess and you'd have to clean it up after us. Even if we did clean the mess ourselves, which we totally would have done, then we'd be just in the way. No, you wouldn't. It'd just be at their desk. It's just not in the way at all. Do you eat in the bathroom every day? No. <laughs> Kodobuki shakes her head. She seems comfortable again because she takes a bite out of her food instead of leaving it in midair. But I've had to leave early today because mom had an early shift, so I didn't have time to eat breakfast. So she called me and I brought her some snacks from the convenience store and I offered to eat with her. It's lonely eating by yourself, right? Hmm. I press my lips together. I eat my lunch alone all the time and I don't feel anything about it. But then, I'm not normal, so... So you stopped by the convenience store and you got breakfast? Yep. And decided to eat in the bathroom? Kotobuki and Fujita seemed to wilt. Seemed like a good idea at the time. I sigh. Even if I don't know them well, it's wrong to just leave this as is. Can't just turn around and leave. Get your food and follow me. Where are we going? The classroom, duh. Eh? You won't be in the way if you stay at your desk and throw your wrappers out yourself. Besides, I'm almost done, so it, it won't be any trouble. And I feel better having you eat there than eat here with all the toilets. Oh, you're really nice, Megumi. The girls gather the bag and wrappers, jumping to their feet. Seems weird to be called by my first name so suddenly. It's Shimizu. Mm, nah, Megumi feels better now. Thanks, Megumi. Hmm. And after that, they've just been acting so familiarly. I don't know what I did. Was it me inviting them to the classroom, talking to them, something more than I'll collect homework now? Oh well, doesn't really matter, does it? I finish looking over my work just as the bell chimes. Everyone begins to drift to their rightful seat, including Inui and Ueda. 
The sit with just one desk between us, so I can hear Inoue talk as she takes her seat. Ueda sits behind her. How could Shimizu say something so cruel to me? The break in her voice is back, faint but still audible. Can't believe she would be so mean. Ueda sounds uncomfortable. Inoue just sniffs. She's so mean to us. I'm positive she's doing this on purpose. She knows full well I can hear her. But I say nothing. I don't mind her talking about me. It's just words, and besides, I'm used to it. If I just ignore her, I'll be fine. The bell chimes again when Miss Haruna returns to stand at the front of the class. I immediately take the lead. We all bow, say our good mornings, and retake our seats. Good morning, everyone. Miss Haruna smiles at us. Before we begin class, I have an announcement to make. The class atmosphere changes. I hear Inoue start whispering to Ueda. Park up a bit myself. I don't know anything about an announcement. We have a new student joining us today. I remember Miss Haruna leaving earlier. Was she ta talking to a new student just outside? Come to think of it, wasn't that girl? You may come in now. The door opens and sure enough, it's her. I blink, a, a bit surprised by this turn of events. What are the odds that the new girl ends up in the class with me? What are the odds that I'm the first student she saw? She smiles, waiting as everyone whispers and stares at her. Hi, my name is Hinata Mikami. My interests are fashion, candy, and shopping. My mom and I moved here for a more peaceful change of scenery, and I've only been here a day and I already love it. I hope we can all get along. She bows and everyone claps for her. Miss Haruna gestures to the empty desk between myself and Inoue. You may take a seat next to Shimizu, she is our class leader, so if you need anything, any help, ask her, okay? Oh, Mikami's eyes light up as she recognizes me. We've met already. Wait, you have? But Mikami isn't listening. She just skips over to her new desk, sitting down, setting down her school bag and taking a seat. Miss Aruna blinks, clearly taken aback, then begins class. I'm still a little surprised, really. What are the odds? <laughs> Miss Aruna closes her lesson book and heads for the door. Hey everyone, lunch time. I'll see you in a bit. Her voice is barely heard above the noise everyone makes. Chairs are scooted back, desks are shoved together, so there's the sound of metal scraping tile. Bags open, kids run out of the room to buy bread or convenience lunches while calling out for requests. I stay put, taking out my bento and popping off the lid. Can't help but smile a little when I see my lunch. Dad put more chicken in it than what's considered usual. An extra treat for the day. I hear the sound of metal on tile again and look up. Mikami is pushing her desk over to Fujita and Kobo Otobuki. She also has a small crowd formed around her already. Our classmates greeting her or asking a quick question before scuttling back to eat. Well, she's certainly popular. Off in the farthest corner of the room, Inoue and Ueda sit at some empty desks with their own food. Inoue is talking away, gesturing so wildly that her fork, with her fork that I think her salmon croquet is going to go flying. Her bad mood certainly didn't last long. Hey Alice, how's it going? Truthfully, despite the delicious food, this is my least favorite part of the day. Everyone is gathering together in groups, pairs, or leaving the room with someone. And I sit at my desk, a lone island. It's my own fault though. I've never been too good at conversation or interaction with others. I have nobody to blame but myself, really. I always think it's easier being alone in the early or late hours of the day, and it's true. The alternative is being alone in a crowd and seeing exactly how alone you really are. Midway through my rice, I hear my name. Shimizu, over, over there? Doesn't sound like they're talking directly to me, so I don't answer. Just lift my eyes, looking around the room from beneath my lashes. My gaze falls on Mikami, just gesturing vaguely with her juice box. She's whispering about me. 
can't hear what the reply is or the rest of the conversation. I do see Inoue walking past her to the trash can though, and, and her eyes flit from Mikami to me. I ignore this and go back to eating. The rest of lunch passes in relative peace. Alice says going good, can't complain. How are you doing? How's your stream been so far? Stream's been very chill so far. It's a very relaxing game. Even though there's a lot of uh, social uh, dynamics going on. And um, I'm doing good. My stream started late because of uh, mental health reasons today. The bell finally chimes and I lead the class in a farewell. Miss Aruna closes her books, gathers her things, and leaves. Goodbye, everyone. I'll see you all tomorrow. The small crowd forms around Mikami as she fetches her coat. They'd crowded around her during lunch, too, but I guess they still haven't had enough. I don't blame them, though. New transfers are always exciting. And Mikami, she's cute. I won't deny that. She's a cute girl. I'm not surprised she has a lot of people admiring her already. If I'm being honest, I think I'm a bit jealous. I can hear people talking to her as I gather up my things. Where'd you live before, Mikami? Ah, Sapporo. Whoa, I've always wanted to see Sapporo. You should, it's really beautiful. Your coat is so cute, Mikami. Thank you. Mikami. Inui pushes to the front of the group, Ueda close behind her. A few people step aside to make room for Inui. From where I stand, I can see a few people giving her looks. Inoue isn't exactly popular. She smiles sweetly, innocently. I can't tell if she's oblivious to the looks that people are giving her or if she just doesn't care. She stops too close to Mikami, making her take a step um, back a bit. I am Tomomi Inoue and this is you, you uh, Ueda. Ueda nods once. Welcome to our class, and if you want, I can be your friend. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of pressure. Alice says, well, I'm glad you're feeling better, and this game is calming your mind a little. Uh, not calming my mind exactly, but um, um, it is calming my... Um, it's calming my body a little bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit relaxed physically. Uh, it's a it's a visual novel, so I don't think th it's mu there's much of an objective rather than you make choices at various points in the game. The choice hasn't shown up yet. Usually, choices show up like maybe like half an hour, forty minutes later. I'm also a slow reader, so um, I get to it very late. Welcome to our class, and if you want, I can be your friend. I know a lot of people, and I can also tell you who to watch out for. Oh, here we go, I sigh, putting in, putting the last of my notebooks into my bag. Watch out for? Uh-huh. A lot of people here are real bad. A bunch of bullies and brats. Inoue is the only kid I know who calls kids her own age a brat. Inoue's voice lowers, though not nearly enough. A lot of people here are really mean, like Shimizu over there. From below my lashes, I see her point in my direction. You need to be careful around her, she's awful. Huh? Shimizu? Mean? Mikami frowns, shaking her head. I don't know, I met her outside earlier and she helped me out. She seems pretty nice to me. She only helped because she's a class leader. Really, she's stuck up and rude. She looks down on the rest of us a lot and says a lot of bad things. He pauses and I hear her voice tighten. I've been dealing with her for years now. With a dramatic swipe at her eyes, Inoue squares her shoulders and looks back at Mikami. But I'm warning you because you sit next to her. She's not a nice person. I don't hear how Mikami responds. I close my school bag, clicking the class louder than I probably need to, and quickly walk away from my desk. Ah, Shimizu! I walk down the hall, we weaving around the other kids, kids on their way home, or going to clubs, clubs, or just milling in the hallway.
You're going to do the dishes while listening? That sounds fun. I've never been part of clubs myself. I know I probably should. It looks better when you're applying to high schools or university. But I can't bring myself to do it. I wouldn't really get along with anyone anyway. I'd probably just be in a corner by myself while everyone else talks and hangs out. Maybe I'll try next year or third year. Shimizu. Hey Shimizu. Fast food falls catch my ear and then a second later Mikami zooms up to me. Shimizu. Hey, you're going home? Uh, yeah. Can we walk together? I suppose. We'd end up walking together anyway, at least for a bit. There's just one single one-way road leading up to the school gates. Mikami grins like I just offered her 10,000 yen. Thanks. As we continue our own way, she starts happily chattering at me. So listen, I wanted to thank you again for helping me earlier. What, telling you which door was unlocked? That was nothing really. But I'd never figure it out if it weren't for you. I'm sure you would have eventually. Hmm. So how long have you been class leader? Since the year started? Yeah, and the year before that, and before that, pretty much since second grade really. Every time it came to came time to choose a leader, everyone voted for me. I don't mind much, I've come to expect it. Sounds like a lot of responsibility. N not as much as you'd think. Not sure where this sudden modesty is coming from. I guess I just don't want to give her the wrong idea about the job, I mean. <laughs> just come in early to help Miss Haruna with anything Miss Haruna needs. I lead the class in greetings and act as go-between for the class and the student council. You're not on the student council yourself? You seem the type. No, I'm not. I just never felt a need to. You'd be good at it. You've only known me a day. How could you know that? Kimi runs around to stand in front of me. She moves so suddenly that I have to quickly stop so I don't run into her. She beams at me, oblivious to our near collision. You wanna know a secret? I can read people. Like their aura and their personality and all that cool stuff. And I can tell that you're awesome. What? You'd be a great at student council and everyone would like you, I can tell. Eh, what? The air feels colder as I stare at her. Something swells in my throat. Hey, uh, Mikami? I don't think you're as good at reading people as you think you are. Eh, how come? My mom always says I'm great at it. Uh, Mikami, I want to tell her the truth. Nobody likes me, but that make me sound like Inui. It sound like I was fishing for compliments. I pause, shaking my head. I go for a different excuse instead. I'm not interested in student council. Oh, then, hmm. Hold on a second. I got a few, um, something going on here. Just gonna pause for a second while I read the chat. Oh, Xanity redeemed Hydrate. Thank you for the Hydrate, Xanity. Yeah, Hydrating is a good idea during visual novels. Butterfly... Ah, Butterfly Latte Viennes. Welcome. Warm dev here popping in before bed. <laughs> yeah, I was just talking earlier about, um, about your comment on, on social media. About uh, how this is a blast from the past. So is this one of your earlier games? Sorry, I missed your chat for a bit, but um, I hope you have a good sleep if you're heading off to bed right now. This was a kinetic VN, so there's no choices. It was my first real commercial VN too, so I was pretty new with. Uh, Making coding choices, huh? Cool. Well, the art is fantastic and the writing is really good too. So, as as far as visual novels go, this is really, really awesome. I like to think my writing has evolved since then, but this has a special place in my heart. Early games often are take up special places in your heart. Even a lot of big companies, they have attachments to their earlier games it's a very um 
it's good that to have things like that to look back on the light system in this in this art is amazing like i i love the glows and the all the background blurry stuff and the and the all the lens flares. <laughs> okay we didn't have lens flares but all the glows um all the faded glows too it's just really fantastic I like to think my right yes i read that well i hope to be able to develop some game i ideas but i'm clueless about coding for the most part there's a lot of uh, programs that allow you to skip over the coding for for the most part so it's a, those are good ones to start with um I don't know how easy RenPy is to use, but I know that one's used for making visual novels if you're interested. I don't know if we talked about that before, but um, if we haven't, then RenPy is an option. Like the soundtrack, uplifting but calming, so it's not too sleepy like some relaxing music can be. No, it's a, it's a really good balance. This was my first completed long games ever. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. That's awesome. I'm glad I'm getting to play it. Lived in Alaska for five years, so I kind of thought back to those days when I drew the backgrounds and the snow. Oh, okay. Okay, that makes sense. I've never been to Alaska, but I imagine that those kind of snowy glows are there. I haven't thought of making a visual novel, but lots of game ideas. Oh, okay, okay. You're talking about other types of games. Right. Um, game Maker is, a, is an engine that lets you make some simple ones. Um, you can add programming to it, but even without it, you can do quite a bit. Just with the visual GUI elements. But that, yeah, that's another option. Uh, RPG Maker is a bit more involved. That one needs a lot more coding, I think. But Game Maker is much simpler than that. Yeah, so um, Butterfly Latte, you you did like, is the, did you do everything in this game? Like, did you do the art and the writing and the music? I think there was like a two people, it's a two people team, right? That you had when, well, your profile on, on, on there says there's two people, but I, I imagine there might be games where only one of you worked on it. I really like the snowflake patterns on the, on the, on the speech box. It gives that sense of coldness. Okay, I see. So, Ethan knows about RPG Maker. I I have a... Um, I used RPG Maker a long time ago when I was in high school. Uh, we made like... We spent three months making an entire level and characters and stuff. But then our hard drive crashed and we lost the whole thing. I still talk about it because it was annoying. Myself and my uh, GF share an account, but this one was mine alone. Okay, awesome. That's that's fantastic. Did the coding, art, and writing. The soundtrack, though, was uh, Forrest uh, Lottern, uh, Lotteros. I highly suggest looking him up. Okay, sounds good. Oh, you bookmark Game Maker. Sounds, oh, that's awesome. Let me know what you all think about it. I spent a lot of time with Game Maker. I've made several games in it too, so um, if you have questions, let me know. I actually haven't seen many visual novels with um, uh, with grade school characters before. Most visual novels are. Um, uh, usually have teenagers uh, or young adults so this is uh, this is very definitely different from that uh, 
okay. Yeah, we'll talk about it later. More. Sanity. Yeah, earlier I had, like, I started my stream really late. I was gonna play it earlier, but... Um... I had a lot of mental health struggles today. Since last night. So even though I even scheduled my stream late today, at 7 instead of 6, I was even 2 hours later than that because I, I just needed to rest, to recover from, from whatever's going on. Didn't have the energy for, for any, any emotional game either. So I needed to like just recover first before I could start. Thank you. Yeah. 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 It's, um, I'm glad uh, that was, uh, that your novel challenged that, uh, stereotype. I actually, um, I think when I was a teenager, um, actually when I was like 13, um, I think, yeah, when I was 13, I read, um, I read a story about two girls, uh, who were really close, and they were, like, uh, I think 12 in the, in the story, and, um, I remember that was, like, um, a big, a big deal for me, because I've never, uh, well, actually, I never read stories about young girls before, like, that I could relate to. Um, and before that point, and it was uh, about really like a close, uh, like a very strong uh, love between two two young girls that the story was about, and and that was uh, that was a huge that had huge impacts on me. Um, it it actually sparked off a lot of um, self awareness, <laughs> let's say. Uh, so, you know, those kind of stories are very important, I think. Um, they're very important in the world. Part of me was actually resisting uh, starting the stream because I was very, um... I read the, like, the the premise of the of the novel. And I was like, it's gonna bring up a lot of stuff. <laughs> Uh, especially because I, I really relate to the, the loneliness aspect that the novel is talking about. Like, I, I read the intro and I was like, it's gonna be exactly that. Like, that, that thing all over again kind of thing. So, that's why I was like, building up the energy before I could, um, before I could start the stream. Just, you know, canceling it was not a, not an option that I wanted to give uh, because I, it was it was important for me, but it also takes energy to go through uh, emotional stuff that you relate to so strongly. expecting to be up this late I'm trying to balance self-care and everything going on myself I might be disappearing pretty soon yeah I'm, I'm a bit surprised to see you up this late too because it's uh, much later there than here but uh, yeah I hope you uh, have a good rest soon huh there's a magical uh, is the story called magical boy the one that you're talking about? Hmm. Heartstoppers on Netflix is also pretty good. A lot of the cliche you must suffer if you're queer, a lot of uh, more of like a genuine romance story. Oh, that's cool. I think I vaguely saw the title, but I don't think I've actually stopped to watch it. Beta reader saying Megumi's depressed, right? 
I wouldn't suggest doing this be an all-in-one hit for a stream or otherwise, but I can promise things get better. Yeah, I, I, I figured as much. I Usually during my showcase, I don't finish the story or finish any of the games, or try not to at least, because I want people to not be exposed to the spoilers, so I, I try to... Um, I try to give people a lot of um, lot of room to explore the story themselves. So yeah, definitely not gonna finish it today. But um, that that's the like the theme of the of the title kind of gave me the impression that things will get better. Now that I think about it, one of the 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 story I was talking about that I read when I was thirteen. It also had one of the girls be very depressed. Um, but she was depressed because she was dealing with grief. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a different type. But it's still like, it was, it was very relatable. Thank you for the hydrate. Okay, let's continue. I walk around her, continuing on my way. Mikami stands there for a few seconds before running to catch up with me. A few moments later, we reach the end of the road, the way to town spread out in front of us. I figure this is where we'll part ways, but Mikami continues to follow me. Hey, we go the same way. She says it like she's discovered a great treasure. <laughs> Looks like it. Mikami falls into line with me and we continue walking. She hums lightly under her breath. We keep walking down one road, another. We turn the same corner. This is great. No, this is getting strange. You're sure you live in this direction? If she's just following me unthinkingly. Well, I don't want her to get lost. Yeah, I do, I do. Well, looks like we're going back to be stuck together a bit then. We keep walking. After a while, I struggle to think of something to keep the conversation going. Only because it's so awkward to walk in dead silence, especially if it becomes a repeated occurrence. We end up walking the same direction every day from now on. Doing so in silence will just feel weird. I pick a safe topic to talk about. How do you like... Ikigai? It's pretty nice so far, really peaceful and quiet. I kinda miss the shopping malls though. You mentioned you like shopping during your class introduction, right? Yeah, do you like shopping? Not really. Oh, Mikami chews on the inside of her cheek, darting her eyes around. But uh, there is a shopping area in Midtown. It's probably not as big as what you're used to, but you might like it. I feel the need to tell her about Ikigai. I kind, kind of like how I have to tell her about school. Not to mention I feel bad for raining on our parade a bit there. Oh, thanks. I'll look it up when I get home. We turn another corner again together. Maybe we could stop. Maybe you could shop together. Wait, what? Uh, me? Sure. I know you said you don't shop much, but it can be just uh it can just be a hanging out thing we live in the same direction we sit next to each other you are the first to talk to me i think the stars are aligning to make us friends <laughs> somehow i doubt the stars are doing anything <laughs> i don't know about that well then how about acquaintances uh Friendly neighbors? Classmates who talk more than sometimes? <laughs> I, uh, I'm safe from answering when Mikami suddenly stops at a corner in the road. Oh wait, this is my stop. She smiles and points down the road. I live down that way. As if it weren't obvious. <laughs> my house is right in the middle. Where do you live? Uh, one more block down. I live two houses away from the corner. Ah, we live, live close together. How lucky. Uh, yeah. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, Megumi. Wait, Megumi? 
Hey. She runs off. Try to call after her, but Mikami is already running down the road to her house. I don't think she can hear me anymore. Weird. I watch her turn and vanish into one of the houses, then I continue for home. I'm home. Welcome home, kiddo. Dad comes in from the kitchen, wiping his hands on his pants. Hmm, you didn't start cooking without me, did you? chat again okay Kiara see you talk to you soon sure thanks for coming by Butterf um, butterfly latte um, and I hope you have a good night I don't know if you stream but if you were streaming I'd give you a shout out Meet me in the kitchen in a little bit and we can get started. Love the color contrast. So good. Especially in the house. Short time later, I'm changed and standing in the kitchen with dad. In front of us sits an array of vegetables, spices and some meat we picked up yesterday. It's curry night from the looks of it. Dad and I always um, cook dinner together. We have since I was seven. I'm not entirely sure what started it. Maybe I just wanted to help out. Maybe he thought I'd like com company instead of playing by myself. Either way, m after mom left, we've been, we've always done this. It's nice. I think it makes the food taste a bit better too, somehow. But I could never tell anyone that. They'd laugh at me. Stern, serious Megumi Shimizu getting sentimental over food, over cooking with her dad, big joke. Dad starts peeling potatoes while I chop the carrots. So how was school? Did you have fun with your friends? It was alright, the same as usual. I pointedly avoid the second question. Well, actually, there's one new thing. We got a new transfer today. Her name is Hinata Mikami, and she's from Sapporo. Sapporo? Dad pauses to look at me in surprise. She's quite out quite a ways. Mm -hmm. In her class introductions, she said her family wanted a more peaceful home. I guess her mom doesn't like large cities anymore. Dad shrugs. Well, everyone has their own reasons for moving. This town has less population too. Is Mikami nice? Think about how she talked to me outside the school when I pointed out the one unlocked door. I think of her as easy... I think of her easygoing smile, how readily she took to our class. I think of how very friendly she was when we walked part way home. Now that I have time to think it over, I wasn't annoyed by her, was I? I didn't know what to do or how to respond, but she wasn't irritating. She was just talkative, and I'm not used to being talked to like that. She's really nice, talks a lot though. She's probably just nervous and eager to make friends. Hand me a carrot, would you? I pass a piece of carrot to him and he pops it into his mouth. He crunches down on it before speaking again. So she's your friend now? Huh? Oh. I busy myself with the vegetable again, focusing on not cutting my fingers. I don't think so. I can feel dad's frown intensify even though I'm not looking at him. Why not? She sounds nice enough. Hmm. It's hard to explain, really. I know dad's, what dad's getting at, but it's hard to explain myself, my situation, without hurting his feelings. It's hard to put everything into words in general, but I try. Well, I don't see a reason I would. I don't see a reason I would. She's nice, but we're pretty different. I don't know how well we'd get, get on. I keep cutting, the sound of the knife clacking on the cutting board filling the gaps between words. She's really social too. I saw her with a big crowd around her a few times. She's got a lot of friends already. Meaning there would be no room even if I wanted to approach her. I don't think I'm really her type. There's no words for a while. 
just clicking off a knife on wood and the rubbing of broth, bubbling of broth. Dad finally speaks. Can't hurt to try. He sounds tired and I feel guilty. But all I do is nod, make an, making an uncommitted noise in my throat. Carrots are ready. And that's that. Oh my god, night time is also pretty. I still feel a little bad, staring up at the ceiling at bedtime. I know what dad's getting at. I know why he sounds so worried and tired half the time when he talks to me, especially about school. He's worried about my lack of friends, the fact that I don't bring people over or visit someone else. The fact that I don't mention anybody when I talk about school, only the lessons and Miss Haruna. About the fact that I always leave early, but, I, but always alone. He's worried that I'm lonely, but I'm not, really. My lack of friends is just another fact of life now. Like my hair is long and my eyes are blue and I don't have friends. It's just another thing that makes me, me. I heard Inui talking to her, and even if she doesn't believe Inui, I just don't see us being uh, good friends. I mean, why would we? I've never had friends. There are two kinds of people in the world, is what I think. There are normal people. Those people smile and talk easily, look people in the eye and laugh. Those people walk right up to strangers and talk to them and come away as friends. They smile, they feel things, and they're just destined to be surrounded by people it seems they'll be successful and happy and loved and then there are other people who are like me we don't talk that easily we don't feel very much at least i don't i'm cold i'm numb and i'm just a creature of routine i can't make myself speak to others or laugh i don't even like myself I go through life doing what's expected of me, finding fleeting joy in the tiniest and oddest things, like in my cooking routine with dad. People like me aren't meant to have friends. It's like a house party, it's all lit up and warm. People like me are on the outside, looking in through the window, and I've accepted that. I'm going to grow up the same way I'm living now. Get a routine job and live a quiet routine life with just me and the cold numbness I always feel. I've accepted it a long time ago This is that this is my lot in life, the kind of person I am. I roll over to fall asleep, already dreaming of snow. Oh, did that end? That's the second dream? Yeah. yeah. I'm here again. I lie still, spreading my arms out and staring up into the endless sky. It's so peaceful here. It's cold, I'm numb, but there's. it's so peaceful and quiet. I feel like I could fall into the sky. That sounds nice, actually. Just fall up into the endless cold blue and stay there forever. Close my eyes, taking a deep inhale through my mouth. Cold stings my throat and fills my lungs. It's not comfortable, but it is at the same time. Familiar, that's what it is. Comfort in familiarity. I don't want to move too much. I could just lie here and let the snow fall on me. Bury me alive. I don't think I'd mind much. I take another deep breath and let myself sink deeper into cold. My alarm goes off. I hit the button to make it stop. It's another day. As usual, I head downstairs, ducking into the kitchen to get my bento. Morning, kiddo. Morning, dad. Everything is as usual, the same routine, as comforting and samey as the winter cold. But this part of the day is alright. The part when I'm with dad at home is okay. My bento is still steaming a bit when I open the fridge. It's still fresh. I lift it to my face and sniff, hoping to catch a whiff of what's inside. I can hear Dad's smile in his voice. Made you something special today, can you figure it out? I smell onions and something savory. Close my eyes briefly so I can focus on my other senses better. Hamburger steak? Dad laughs and I feel him tussle my hair. You're welcome, sweetheart. Every day my lunch is something new, every day a surprise. I don't know how Dad does it. 
making a new bento every day and cleaning everything up before I wake up. Never having any leftovers so I don't eat it for dinner the same night or repeat two days in a row. I don't know how he does any of it. But I appreciate it. It's another one of the ways he shows his love. And as small as it is, it makes me happy. They take another long uh, s snow whiff? Slow whiff? Smells great. Wait, is there egg in there too? You got it. Hamburger steak, scrambled eggs with rice, vegetable, and strawberries. Oh my god. Thanks, Dad. I'm off now. I'm nearly at the door when Dad grabs the back of my sweater. Whoa, hold on. He presses the thermos from yesterday into my hands. It's hot. More rice porridge. I don't want you eating cold breakfast. Dad, it's fine. No cold breakfast. Dad looks down his nose at me. You need something filling. I'm tired of eating buns and cream bread for breakfast. You're a growing girl. There's no point in arguing. Even if I say something, he'll just force it onto me. Besides, if I stand here and argue, I'll be late. So I wordlessly take the thermos, taking a drink right then and there to satisfy him. Now I'm off. Have a good day, Megumi. I take a deep breath once I step outside. I'm back. I head down to the walk and begin my trek to school. Every now and then I take a drink of rice porridge. It's not chocolate today, but it does take, taste a little sweet. I think Dad put honey in it this time. That's pretty thoughtful of him. My walk is as peaceful as ever. Just me, the sky, the snow, and the silence. It's a bit like my dream, but at the same time, it's not. It's hard to describe. But while my dream gives me a feeling of resignation, my walk gives me a feeling of contentment, peace, a reprieve from what life at school is like. I'll get over... I'll get it over with... Though... As I always do, all I have to do is endure school for a few hours at the start of the day, and I get to be comfortable and secure the rest of the night. Everything will be, Megumi, Megumi, wait up! The shout pierces the silence of the morning. I stumble to a stop, running around in disbelief. That voice, no way, she can't possibly be out this early. But she is... Mikami runs up to me, waving over her head and kicking snow behind her. I just stand there, watching. It's not even close to time for everyone else to leave. I don't even need to leave early because of distance or anything. I just go... What's Mikami's reason? Mikami stops beside me, snow dislodging around her feet. She laughs and tries to catch her breath at the same time. Her breath forms an icy white clouds by her head, like steam from a train. Hi there, thanks for waiting for me. You're... you're welcome? I blink, shake my head. What are you doing out so early? I saw you walking by from my window, so I decided to come down and join you. What? But what about your mom and breakfast? Mom was fine with it, besides we ate breakfast already. We're early risers. Just like you, Megomi. Huh. I start walking again and Mikami walks beside me. Alice says she relates to that feeling of safety and enduring something and then going back to going back out of it. thought you just came to school early yesterday so you could meet the principal. Well, yeah, that was true. Mikami shrugs. Speaking of which, though, why didn't your mom come with you yesterday? When I went to school for the first time, dad went with me to see me off. In fact, he insisted on it. Well, mom works a lot, not in an office. She works from home. And she was trying to meet her writing goal yesterday and had to finish unpacking her room and had to go to the bank and had to... Okay, okay, I understand. I cut her off not to be rude, but because she's already sounding out of breath. Just how much did her mom have to do yesterday? Mikami just laughs and takes a comically loud inhale. Anyway, I had a map of the route to 
school, so I said I'd go by myself. I was going to walk to and from school anyway, so I figured it'd be fine. How about you? Why are you at school so early? I'm a little surprised she's asking. It feels a little bit strange to have a conversation like this with someone my own age. I always go to school early. I'm the class leader, so I help Miss Haruna before class starts every day. Is that part of your job? No, I just like it. Mikami hums under her breath. What kind of help? Hmm? What kind of help do you do? Small things mostly. Make extra photocopies, tidy up, clean the parts of the classroom the cleaning students missed. Wait, they don't clean it good enough? Well, usually they do. I only have to do it twice a month or so. I don't mention that I usually do it when, the in when Inui is assigned to clean. I was in a cleaning group with her once. Inui, you have to clap the razors harder. You're just tapping them. But it's hard. I'm trying my best. Please just smack them together like you're killing a bug. <laughs> Can you show me, pretty please? Inui, don't stand so close to me. I'm trying to sweep. What are you doing anyway? You're not even cleaning anything. You're doing such a good job without me, though. Are you just showing off, maybe? You're so good at cleaning, Shimizu. You should do it more often. The trash hasn't been emptied. Anyway, I asked you to empty it. Please stop it, Shimizu. I'm awful with yelling. I wasn't yelling. I'm trying to... Telling you to... You have to be nicer to people, Shimizu. How do you even get to be class leader like that? I shudder despite myself, feeling a grimace on my face. Never again. I shake my head, shooing away all the memories. And coming to school early since I was in elementary school. At this point, it's part of my routine. Oh. I fall silent again, only the sound of her shoes crunching against snow to fill the air. I take another drink of rice porridge and then pause before I screw the cap back on. Did you want some? But Mikami shakes her head. I'm full. Okay. I screw the cap on and lower the thermos. Oh hey, you, you said your mom works from home. What does she do? Mom's an author. Mikami brightens more than she already was at those words. Her eyes sparkle, her smile widens. She's clearly proud of her mom. She writes romance novels and romantic comedies. For teens or grown-ups? Little bit of both. She wrote, I want to rewrite your destiny. <laughs> Have you heard of it? I shake my head. I don't read a lot of romance. The blunt words slip out before I can stop them. At first I worry Mikami will be offended or put out, but she just keeps smiling. That's okay, but yeah, that one's her most popular work. I'm surprised a famous author would want to come to a small town. Mikami just shrugs. He likes it here so far. It's less crowded, less noisy. She loves the view of the street too. The street? She likes a quieter looking view. Our old house was in a pretty crowded place, so she couldn't enjoy it. So yeah, she likes it here. She's already made friends with the lady at the grocery store and our new mailman. Whoa, her mom must be as social as Mikami herself is. Sound like two of a kind. So you're both doing well here? Mm-hmm. Mikami nods. And school's great too. I'm already making friends. I think back to how quickly she began to eat lunch with Kotobuki and Fujita, the students that spoke to her all day. All I can do is nod. I can tell you're going to love ik Ikigai and school then. Mm -hmm, already do. Do you like it? Huh? The question takes me off guard. All I can do is blink. School, Ikigai, do you like it? It's at school, my hometown. I guess I, guess I like it fine. Feel a bit bad. Now that I'm saying that here, I just said I hope she likes it here and my own feelings are meh. Feel like I just contradicted myself though. In an effort to save things, I hastily add, but I've been here forever. I'm just used to it by now. It's really a good place. We reach the school and head inside. Mikami falters a bit while we walk down the hall frowning slightly. I think it's finally hit her that she has to occupy herself until class starts. 
I stop, unable to keep the grin off my face. Do you have homework you need to catch up on? No. Hmm. Did you bring your phone? Yeah, I guess I could play a game or something or go to the library. She keeps frowning. It's almost funny. You like to read? Comes out sounding snottier than I intended, and I wince. Luckily, Mikami doesn't seem to notice. Yeah, a little. Which way is the library? I point her in the right direction. And with a bright smile, she's gone. Now it's just me. And Miss Haruna, she, she smiles as I come in and I remove my winter gear. Hi, Shimizu. I heard another voice outside the door. Is someone else there? Mikami and I came to school together. She's in the library right now. Miss Haruna nods and begins organizing a stack of papers. I bet anything that's our quiz for today. Is Mikami going to take the quiz with us? Can't help but wonder about it. She's a transfer, so I don't know if she's behind us in math or not. But Miss Haruna nods. She and I talked a little bit about when she, uh, where she is in relation to the rest of us. We're pretty much on the same page, though she's a little further ahead. The quiz will be no problem for her. I nod. So I guess I'm not supposed to look at those then. I point to the papers in her hand. Uh, nope, but you can help me clean the back blackboard. She retrieves a clean cl cleaning cloth from the seam from seemingly nowhere. A bright smile on her face. I immediately get to work. Mikami enters the room just as I'm finished with emptying the trash. Miss Haruna looks up and smiles at her. Mikami, hi there. Everyone else should be arriving shortly. No problem. Her gaze drifts around the room till it settles in on me. She watches as I put the trash can back where it belongs, a thoughtful expression on her face. Wow, Megumi, you're a hard worker. It's nothing. But don't be modest, Shimizu. Miss Haruna laughs from her desk. You're a big help. I'm just doing my job. Hmm, but nobody asks you to come in early every day. You know you don't have to, by the way. You chose to sleep in or something, I won't be angry. It'd feel weird if I didn't at this point. Been doing it so long now that it's as routine as tying my shoes or brushing my teeth. I try to smile to show that I'm being honest. It doesn't work. It's fine. Mikami frowns and looks at like she wants to speak, but at that point, voices start to fill the hallway. Soon as our classmates begin to trickle in, Kobut Kotobuki and Fujita walk in together as usual. Ah, uh, hey, Hinata? Ami, Junko. Mikami rushes over to them and the three start talking. I can't help but be a bit impressed. She really is making friends easily, huh? It looks like the duo is going with the... going to the three musketeers soon. If it's not already, that is. I walk back to my desk and sit down. Something feels strange in my chest, but I ignore it. Probably ate my rice porridge too fast. I mind my own business as the rest of the class slowly filter in. Everyone's wrapped up in their own conversations. A baseball game on TV, the snow, cute winter clothes, today's quiz. Then a pair of girls stop near my desk and I hear a familiar conversation. Please you... Oh, not again. Please, I didn't finish it last night. What? But why not? Mom took me to the mall to cheer me up after Shimizu bullied me and I got a new book. I was so absorbed in it I couldn't do the homework. Inui does this weird dance, twisting herself back and forth as she winces at, whine, as she whines a little. Before I knew it, it was bedtime. Please you, I'm asking you as your best friend. But Ueda's eyes dart around the room, looking at every everything but Inui. Can't you? I can't do it myself. You know I have trouble with it. I was only going to say, can't you get someone else to help? But everyone else here hates me. You're the only friend I have. You're the only person who is not mean to me. And he reaches out and clasps Ueda's hand in her own, squeezing them tight. I don't mean to be a problem, but I need help. Ueda falters. I, uh... Inui? Anyway, speaks and squeaks and looks at me, dropping Weda's hand like they're like the burn. Sh Shimizu, Weda wants you to leave her alone. She doesn't have to show you her homework because you are too lazy to do your own. 
I'm not lazy. Everything's too hard. I need her help. You said yourself you were reading all lights last night and the day before it was an anime. Before that, it was video games. Before that, it was TV and a book. Don't make excuses. They're not excuses. Inoue stomps her foot childishly. Really? If that's the case, then you really are having trouble. I'd be happy to direct you to the tutoring program so you can get the help you need. But they they hate me there. They all do. She moves closer to it, gripping her arm and putting her face on her shoulder. Just asking my friend for help. Is that so wrong? You're not asking for help. This is taking advantage of Ueda. Inuya gapes at me for a few seconds. As I said, if you really do have trouble with the work, I can arrange you to meet with a tutor. Why are you being so mean to me? What did I ever do to you? You're so cruel, Shimizu. As she runs, she nearly bumps into Mikami, coming back to her desk. Ueda is left standing where she is for a few moments, blinking a few times. I sigh. Ueda, are you okay? But Ueda just runs past me and over to Inui. I watch as she puts a hand on Inui's shoulder, reassuring and coaxing her until she stops crying. Inui lifts her head, showing a completely dry face. And again, I watch as Ueda, her head bowing in defeat, hands over her homework. Oh, Ueda. Hey, um, Mikami's voice makes me turn around. She stands there, jabbing a thumb over her shoulder at Inui and Ueda. What the heck was that? Hmm? I heard Kobu Toki before I see her, walking up to us as she's alerted by Mikami's shout. Have a good night, Kiara. Thanks for the lurk. Music is still a bit loud. She looks past us to where Mikami is pointing, and immediately the situation becomes clear to her. Oh, that's just Inui again. I know that's Inui, I... Wait, what do you mean, again? It's just Inui being Inui. Fujita appears next to Kobutuki, shrugging her shoulders. She's just like that, you learn to ignore her. Ignore her? Mikami whirls around to look at me. She moves so fast that her hair whips around her head, standing with her posture and shoulders rigid. I almost stand at attention when I see her. She's giving me such a fierce look. What do you mean, Inui being Inui? She does this all the time? Well, yeah. Kobutuki and Fujita exchange looks. Like we said, she's just like that. We're all used to it. Used to? It's just Inui, Mikami. But... But what about what she's doing to Ueda and how she's talked to you, Megumi? Mikami's getting all worked up and her mentioning me just now. Is she getting upset on my behalf too? This is embarrassing. I feel myself getting warm and start shifting my feet. Really shouldn't worry about it, Mikami. I've been dealing with her for years. I'm used to handling. But you shouldn't be. Her shout is so loud and sudden it makes the three of us jump. Mikami is oblivious to our shock, fuming as she looks to each of us in turn. You can't be okay with this, can you? With what she's doing to Ueda, how she talks to Megumi just now? I'm used to... But you don't have to be. You don't have to take poor treatment just because you're used to it. She's getting really worked up. Maybe it's personal for her. Did she see something like this at her old school? Either way, it's getting awkward. I almost feel guilty, as if it's my fault that she's so upset. And honestly, all I want to want is to get her to calm down. Besides, she might attract attention and cause problems, like Inui might hear her and try to retaliate. I step a little closer, lowering my voice so she'll have no choice but to be quiet if she wants to hear me. It's fine, Mikami. Mikami looks at me and I feel my insides squirm. She feels sorry for me. This is weird. I don't like this weird feeling. It's too different. It's fine, but but can't you at least tell, Miss Haruna? Kobutuki sighs. We can't. She can't do anything unless she sees it happening or there's proof of proof it's a problem. And Inoue is careful about that. How can you be so calm about this? She was calling everyone here names yesterday when she introduced herself to me. Doesn't that bother any of you? 
Well, yeah, a bit, but what can you do? Besides, it's nothing too bad, just brat or something. We just ignore it. Megumi can't ignore it. I remember what Inoue said to Mikami about me. What else must she must have heard? And that somehow she's picked up that I go through this every day. I feel weird again. She shouldn't worry about me. She doesn't need to, right? She should only worry about herself and her friends. <laughs> oh, that was good. <laughs> I tried to move the subject along, not wanting this squirming feeling anymore. Never mind it, you three. Have you all finished your homework? Kotobuki suddenly goes pale and turns, runs to her desk. Crap, 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 crap. Fujita and Mikami laugh, and the atmosphere lifts considerably. Inoue is swiftly forgotten, and I feel my squirming inside start to calm down. But the warmth in my face, the warmth that came when I realized Mikami worried about me, doesn't leave. Class eventually begins, and it goes as normal, including Inoue coming back with a freshly copied homework sheet. I'm so glad we're friends, you. I can always rely on you. You should be class leader instead of Shimizu. I had tried to ignore it as usual, but I couldn't help thinking back to what Mikami had said. You don't need to take poor treatment just because you're used to it. Is that true? Should I put my foot down more? I usually do on behalf of Ueda, but... Should I maybe try to speak up when she calls me names? Says I bully her. She apparently told her mom I bullied her. I picked up on that pretty fast. But do I need to just let that slide? Said nothing for so long. I just let it fall on me and melt away like snow. But maybe I should stop doing that. No, I shouldn't think about that now. For now, I should focus on schoolwork. I blink and I return to the present, focusing on what Miss Haruna is saying. And I want to remind you all that next week, we'll be starting our cooking lessons. Everyone suddenly begins taking, talking at once, cheering and chattering in excitement. I can't say I blame anyone, I'm pretty eager to cook too. It'll be fun to cook on our own, instead of just helping our parents do something simple, like beating the eggs. Miss Harona lifts her hands for quiet, but nothing happens. Uh, Shimizu, if you would please. I stand up and wrap my knuckles against my desk. The noise and voice stop. All eyes are on me. Miss Harona has more to say. Please listen to the rest of the announcement, everyone. Nobody speaks again, and I see the kids nearest me look to the front. I take that as my cue to sit again. Thank you, Shimizu. So we'll be cooking in groups. I want everyone to get into groups of three or four before next week begins. On Monday, I'll write your names down and we'll head over to the kitchens. Today's Wednesday, so there's plenty of time. The noise level briefly rises again as everyone starts to pick one or two people already. Luckily, it's not as loud as before and it quiets again quickly. Okay, that being said, it's time for a quiz now. Put away your notebooks and close your bags. There's a bit of noise as everyone does what we're told, ta uh, taking out fresh pencils and a good eraser. Miss Haruna walks between the desks and gives us a quiz paper, face down. You have 10 minutes. This is just a refresher of what we covered earlier, so you shouldn't have any trouble. Everyone ready? Begin. I flip over my paper and look over the questions. Ah, uh, good, I can do all of these. My dad always told me to answer the ones I can first, then come back to the others later, but I don't need to do that right now. That's good, I should be finished in no time. I never followed that rule. <laughs> now that, that rule is, uh, is taught often, but um, I just never, I didn't enjoy breaking sequence. So we used to always just um, answer things in sequence and then just let things go if we ran out of time. We're so chill in school. Never worried about any of, like... No, we, we never used to get like full points or anything. It's just, um, it's just we refuse to care about it. 
because stressing about it would be counter to what we wanted out of school. Two minutes go by, three, four, the class is quiet. Every now and then there's a cough or a disgruntled, ah, man, but that's it. Miss Harona sits at her desk, thumbing through her lesson plan. Overall, it's pretty quiet, peaceful, and in my peripheral vision, I see Mikami suddenly bolt upright. <laughs> oh my god, in the middle of the quiz? Oh wow, this is fantastic. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh, wow. That is... that is... That is the best way. <laughs> Dealing with a bully? That's... <laughs> oh god. Okay, let's save this. <laughs> okay. She's looking at my paper. I jump, dropping my pencil in my shock. I look up to see Mikami standing straight as a board, one hand on her desk, her other hand is pointing to Inui. A pinched look of fury is on her face as she looks at Miss Haruna. Inui is copying my quiz, Miss Haruna. What? Inui fumbles for her words. I notice she is leaning over at her desk, but she's leaning towards Mikami instead of over her own paper. No, no, I'm not. Liar, I saw you. Mikami puts both hands on her desk as she glares down at Inui. You were looking right at my desk, at my paper. You wrote down your answers at the same time I did, and I then looked again. You were copying my work. I saw you. I wasn't. Miss Haruna steps towards them. Mikami, Inui, let me see your quizzes. The girls hand their papers over, though Inui looks a bit more anxious about it. Miss Haruna holds up both quizzes, looking back and forth between them. She frowns. Okay, while the rest of us go to the library today, you two are going to stay here and retake the quiz on opposite sides of the room while I supervise. Fine by me. Anyway, but I wasn't copying her. I wasn't cheating. Anyway, either retake the quiz or take an F. Your choice. Anyway, freezes, the color draining from her face. She just stares, silent. Nobody else speaks. Finally, she sighs, hanging her head. Okay. Miss Haruna walks back to the front, taking the quizzes with her. Everyone finished your quizzes, you have two minutes. Turn my head downward, but I watch Mikami from behind my lashes. She angrily sits back down, huffing and folding her hands. She spends the rest of the quiz time glaring straight ahead. Beside her, Inui sulks. I go back to my quiz and finish the last question just as Miss Haruna says, pencils down. The bell rings to signal lunchtime and everyone starts getting ready. I stay where I am and pull out my bento. It's then that I remember dad packed hamburger steak. In all the excitement during the quiz, I forgot about that. My mouth starts to water as I try to pry the lid off. Megumi. I hear Mikami's voice from nearby. A bit stunned, I turn to look. Yep, sure enough, she's standing by a round, uh, standing by a round little table where Fujita and Kobut Kotobuki are already sitting. Mikami waves her arm over her head, beckoning me over. Come eat with us, Megumi. I blink, weighing the pros and cons. <laughs> well, okay, maybe not the cons. There are no cons to eating with them, I guess. I wouldn't mind, not really. But it's just so weird, isn't it? It's so out of the blue. This is abnormal. But it'd be rude to refuse, wouldn't it? I warily get up from my seat slowly in case she changes her mind or this turns out to be a trick. If it's either, I can pretend I was just getting something from across the room. But Mikame just watches me with a smile. She sees my hesitation and waves me over again. Come on, I saved you a seat. Eh, I don't, but Mikami just keeps smiling and waving at me. Kotobuki and Fujita turn around to look at me, expectant grins on their faces. I guess that settles it. The quiet sigh, I stand up fully, taking my lunch with me. I cross the space over to the table, and I sit down. It feels weird to sit between people like this, exposed almost. 
I half expect Kotobuki to suddenly whirl around and punch me. I shake off the notion, that's just ridiculous, that's silly. Honestly, where did that even come from? Nobody just whips around and punches people. Nobody's saying anything, they just go back to opening their lunches. Like this is normal. It's honestly pretty weird. Does nobody else feel this awkwardness? Let's eat. Fujita peels the lead from her bento. Wow, my mom made me lunch, made my lunch into a magical girl shape. Lucky, dad can't make lunch art to save his art, save his life. Kotobuki sneakers as she shows off her own lunch. You wanna try my cherry tomatoes for your sausage? You wanna trade my cherry tomatoes for your sausage? Hmm, apparently it's just me. <laughs> hey, I've got tiramisu. Mom put a piece of it in for my dessert. Uh, dessert. You guys want some? Oh yeah, I love tiramisu. Never had it, but I hear it's good. How about you, Megumi? I blink, taking a second to register the fact that she asked me to. Mikami smiles at me, lifting her plastic knife and fork over her dessert. She looks expectantly at me, head slightly tilted. Uh, oh, uh, sure. Mikami pulls out three napkins. She divides the tiramisu as best as she can, plopping each piece into a napkin. Here you go. Hesitantly, I take my fork and scoop off a piece of tiramisu. Just as slowly, I pop the forkful into my mouth. My eyes go wide as the taste of cocoa mixed with coffee explodes on my tongue. Whoa. Mikami laughs at the face I'm making and the fact that I quickly take two more bites. It's good, huh? Tiramisu is awesome. Yeah. We got it from the bakery down the street from our house while we are taking a walk. I didn't even know they had it, but as soon as mom saw it, she... Excuse me, Mikami? No. Oh. The four of us look up from our food to see Inui standing at our table. She's abandoned her lunch and Ueda in the front of the in the corner of the room. She stands there for a few seconds, biting her lower lip and staring at her shoes. Mikami scoots backwards a little, and I notice Inui is standing a bit too close to her. Listen, I wanted to say sorry for looking at your answers. Uh-huh. Mikami sounds unimpressed. I just I needed to pass this quiz and I needed the help. You usually helps me during quiz quizzes, but you are right there, so... We're friends. No, we're not. And friends help each other out, so I didn't realize that would make you so upset. Girl, you are cheating off of my paper. How could I not get upset? Hey, you haven't denied you were doing it at first, so you must have known I'd be upset and that it was wrong. But I really do hope you can forgive me. She moves closer to Mikami. Mikami leans back so she can have semblance of personal space. Really, I didn't mean to be a bother or hurt anyone. The last thing I want to do is cause pe problems for my friends. I know you probably don't want to forgive me. I did something very wrong and you have every right to hate me forever. I don't even deserve to be forgiven. But if you can, I hope we can still be... No, piss off. Mikami goes back to her food, taking a large fork full of ground chicken. Across the table, Kotobuki and Fujita choke on their food. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Inui blinks, jumping backwards like she saw a bug. She just stares, blinking in disbelief at Mikami. Hey, Sh Shimizu, did you just hear her? Inui sounds hysterical. She said bad words. She insulted me. You're the class leader. Say something. Mikami, refrain from using such hurtful language in the future. Inui, Mikami clearly wants you to leave her alone. Inui's pout is visible only for a second before she turn before she's turning and storming back to her corner. I watch her sit down forcefully beside Ueda, grumbling under her breath. Well, that's over. Jeez, Hinata. Kotobuki's laughing despite herself, covering her mouth with a hand so we don't see her chewed up food. I didn't expect that from you. Well, she's taking me off. Mikami gestures with her fork while she speaks. 
You heard the way she's trying to guilt trip me. All this forgiveness and forgive me. Come on, just say I'm sorry. And to be honest, I was already kind of mad at her for saying everyone else here is a rude brat. The heck? <laughs> we told you though, she's been doing this since elementary school. You just ignore her and she'll leave you alone. Yeah, only to talk about you behind your back. Kami shoves a piece of celery into her mouth. I had to say something. I see her eyes briefly dart towards me as she speaks, but I choose to say nothing. If you say so. Kotobuki grins and returns to her lunch. And for a while, it seems like that's the end of the conversation. We just busy ourselves with our food and making quick work of it. But before long, so we're all a group, right? Huh? I blink wondering if I might have missed a conversation or something. But no, apparently I didn't, because Fujita and Kotobuki look as confused as I feel. A group? You mean like a group of friends or... Friends? Now I'm really confused. Mikami shakes her head and laughs. No, well yes, but I mean for cooking. We're supposed to be in groups of three or four, and there's four of us, so we're a group, right? Wait, this includes me? I'm lost. Oh, I see. Really? I don't. <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? It's fine with me. Megumi? I sit there processing all of this. Still doesn't make any sense to me. First I'm invited to eat with them, now I'm being roped into a cooking group? But why? Why am I chosen? I don't have anything in common with these girls. We're not even friends, it's a simple fact, they barely know me as anything other than the class leader, and Mikami doesn't know me at all. And I don't know who else I'd group with. I can't see myself just approaching someone, and even if I did, I doubt they'd let me in. My best bet is to just say yes, no matter how baffling this is. I silently nod. Mikami immediately brightens even further. Awesome, from now on we're, uh, what's the word for four people? Quartet. We're a, quart we're a quarter. <laughs> she says quarter. A quartet, Hinata. Quartet, right. I don't understand. <laughs> The rest of the school day goes as normal. We go through the rest of the classes. We head to the library to borrow books. Except Inoue and Mikami, of course. Inoue doesn't look very happy when we all return. But the rest of the day is normal, except, except all I can think of is what happened at lunch. The thing that threw a complete wrench in my routine. Monotonous existence. I don't understand. I pack my things at the end of the class. Staring at my bag without seeing it, all I can think about is what happened at lunch, being pulled into a group. Inoue and Ueda walk past, Inoue grumbling bitterly to Ueda. Can you believe me, Kami? I don't know why I bothered being nice to her before. Hmm. I said I was sorry, why can't she just let go and move on? I don't hear Ueda's response, they go out the door as Inoue finishes speaking. Without the distraction, my mind goes back to Mikami and the others. Hey, Gonzer. <clears throat> Gonzer's in the chat. Yes. It's not just about cooking. I can feel it. I can. I can't explain it, but I just. I just know. Kotobuki and Fujita are familiar with me, using my first name. Mikami is already using my first name. Mikami has invited me to eat with them. Fujita and Ko Kotobuki just accepted my presence like that. Mikami didn't give any second thought to bringing me into her cooking group. Mikami just assumed everyone was okay with it. Mikami. Mikami. Megumi? Huh? I look up to see Mikami standing at my desk, a confused look on her face. You've been just standing there for a while. Are you okay? Are you sick? I realized that I finished packing a minute ago. I just been staring at my desk this whole time. I must have looked pretty weird, frowning at nothing like that. Oh, no, I'm fine. Without another word, I grab my bag and head off. Mikami follows after me. We grab our coats and head outside, leaving the warmth of the school and facing the chill of the outdoors. Kotobuki and Fujita are waiting in front of the school, expectant smiles on their faces. As we approach, they turn around and start walking so that we're all together. 
Hey, hey, what do you think... What do you think we'll be cooking? It takes a moment to realize I'm the one Kotobuki is addressing. She looks at me expectantly, patiently. My insides squirm, but I try to sound indifferent. Lots of things, I don't know. But I saw works in the walks in the room when I walked past once, so I think we'll be frying later. Wow, I love fried food. Mom likes to buy, buy fry burritos for dinner sometimes. Fry burritos? What does fried burrito look like? Oh, frying the ins the fillings of the burrito. Okay. Yeah, the dialogue is fantastic, right, Alice? Pass I mean, <laughs> I mean Mexican-style burritos, not Japanese. We won't, we won't make burritos. We'll make things like tonkatsu. Uh, Mexican burritos would be nice. I've always wanted to make them myself, but mom won't let me fry things at home yet. Hmm. They're, they're still talking to me. I don't understand. Mikami waves goodbye at a few kids running past us and calling out to her. I like tonkatsu. I'll be, it'll be fun to make some myself. You've ever made any? Mm-hmm. Mikami shakes her head. I've never cooked before. Huh? I turn my head to look at Mikami. But Fujita asked my question for me. Why? You don't even help with curry or... Uh, tepanyaki? Once again, Mikami shakes her head. Nah, -uh, I've never done anything like that. I've never even cooked rice. So it's gonna be fun. I hope we can take some of our food home. Right, Megumi? Mm-hmm. I don't understand. <laughs> oh, you mean the burrito would look like a huge egg roll? Probably. Like a fully fried burrito. Yeah, you can't... I don't think you can do that with regular tortilla, but with certain types of flour, you can... Like, you know those like crispy ones? Those would be interesting. We walk down the path leading out into town. The entire time, I can hear Fujita, Kotobuki, and Mikami talking. They chat pleasantly, as if they've known each other their whole lives. And then there's me, on the outside, yet somehow roped into their group. A group that didn't even exist until Mikami transferred in. I don't understand. Right, Megomi? Uh-huh. I blink, feeling my cheeks get warm from the embarrassment of being caught off guard. Sorry? Vegeta smiles, leaning forward a bit so she can talk to me easier. I said we should hang out more, right, Megomi? I guess so, yeah. I mean, I don't feel strongly one way or another, but this is easier than arguing, right? <laughs> It'd be fun if, if it was cool with you, I mean. Yeah, only if it's cool. I don't understand, but it's easier to just say yes. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey! Mikami suddenly turns back to Kotobuki. The bandage on your face, did you get that idea from Pop Berry? Yeah, isn't it cute? I have some for you too if you want. No, I shouldn't. Mom will think someone hit me and freak out. She'd go nuts if I came home with a bandage on. Your mom sounds protective. Yeah, but I'm used to it. Besides, I'd be worried about the bandage getting dirty. Oh, you're right. It'd be hard to wash my face every day with the bandage in the way. Suit yourselves. I'm gonna keep this. The three of them start talking about Pop Berry, about fashion and clothing, about nail polish. I tune them out, only nodding and humming when they ask when they speak to me. I don't know much about any of that stuff, but they aren't bothering me, so it's all right. Despite that, something about all this feels strange, like the first few moments of running hot water over freezing hands. <laughs> but what a description. Except instead of my hands, it's in my chest and brain. <laughs> We reach the end of the path, Fujita and Kotobuki wave goodbye and head home. They go in the opposite direction of Mikami and I. I numbly lift my head uh, in return, but I don't wave. Instead, I wait till they turn around, then I turn and start walking. 
My insides are squirming. My chest is tight. My head is buzzing. I don't understand. I don't understand any of this. Cooking will be fun. <clears throat> mm -hmm. The whole day has been weird and it just keeps getting weirder. Maybe my choosing to make small talk did something. Maybe I did something to the universe. I didn't intend to change anything just by talking to Mikami on our way to school. All I wanted was to avoid awkward silence. But today she's gotten upset partly on my behalf, kept talking to me all day, invited me to eat with her, broke me into a cooking group, and now this? I don't understand. I don't understand any of this. Just what did I do? I'm glad you're in my group. She's just feeling um, uh, a warm feeling. We're going to have so much fun, Megumi. Megumi, she calls me Megumi, like Kotobuki and Fujita do. Something cracks. I don't understand. I don't even realize I've spoken this out loud until Mikami stops, stares at me. My heart drops. She tilts her head, serving me, calm, waiting. What do you mean? She sounds so nonchalant. I wish I could pretend I said nothing. I wish I could lie. I want to lie. The question makes me think the crack get bigger. Makes it open up wide and I can't stop anything from coming out. I, I don't understand, Mikami. I don't understand why you're doing this. I don't understand any of it. I don't understand why you call me Megumi. I don't understand why I'm in your group. I don't understand why you insist on talking to me like this. I don't understand why you invited me over during lunch. I don't understand. I'm just your class leader. I helped you because you needed help. Inoue said so herself. And, and, and you're talking to me, calling me by my first name, inviting me in. I just don't understand why you're doing any of this. Finally stop, needing to catch my breath, comes out in short gasps, fogging in front of my face. Mikami just stares and I realize how much I just unleashed on her. Wish I could take it all back, pretend I never let the crack happen, or get as big as it just did. Take all my words and feelings and swallow them all back, go back to that cold place. But of course, no matter how hard I wish for it right then, nothing happens. The ensuing silence is deafening, it's like someone hit pause on the world. I can't hear my own breathing. My heart pounds in my ears, but I hear nothing. She just stares. Can't move. I just stare, numb. But Mikami only shrugs. Because you're nice and I like you, Megumi. The world unpauses. She speaks like it's the most obvious thing in the world. You're nice. I like you. She repeats it like I didn't hear her, and maybe I didn't. You what? I like you. You're nice. Mikami once again repeats what she just said. She doesn't sound impatient. She just says it as if it's a simple common fact, like water is wet. I just stare at her, trying to think back, back to anything I could have said or done that was particularly nice. I helped her when she, we first met, but, but that's my job and something anybody else could have done. It doesn't make me nice. As if sensing my doubt, Mikami keeps speaking plainly and simply. You let me talk to you yesterday and said it was okay to walk home together. And earlier today, you offered me some of your rice porridge. That wasn't nice. That was that was a regular common courtesy thing. Mikami seems to sense my hesitation. Mm, but I guess you don't think so? I don't feel nice. I mumble the words looking at the snow. <laughs> I think you've got the wrong idea, Mikami. I think you've I've tricked her. Well, you can't really say the reason someone's nice. Mikami scoffs a bit, but she still smiles. It's just a feeling, and I get the feeling you're nice. You're good, Mikami. But I'm not. I don't believe that. We just stand there, the cold stinging our cheeks and our breath fogging up. Mikami keeps her eyes on mine, and it makes me uncomfortable, but I can't look away. All I can think of is arguing. Disputing her idea that I'm nice, but I can't make the words come out. I know it's pointless to even try. She'll just counter every time. I am defeated, but I'm not upset about it, just feeling weird. Mikami smiles gently, turning to walk again. Should we head home? It's cold. Uh, yeah. 
I tear my feet away from the sidewalk, freeing them on the snow that's caked around them. And we walk the same way home together, as if this is normal and nothing happened at all. I don't understand this. I don't understand Mikami. I really and truly don't. I wonder if I ever will, or if it ever even matters that I don't. We walk together, our feet crunching against the snow. Oh, the image keeps getting warmer. Okay, we're gonna stop here. So, that was Warm by Crispy Cat. If you want to check out this game, it's at crispycat.h.io. We didn't finish it, obviously, but um, it's only uh, 11 US dollars right now, and you can get it at h.io. And I think there's quite a bit of story left, probably more than half. I'm not going to read all the description because I think we covered most of it in the game itself. But this is, um, it's a really unexpected type of visual novel for me. I've never seen this type before. I've only seen mostly like young adult romance visual novels. Um, no, there's no choices in this. It's more like a kinetic novel as the dev has said, but it's, um, it's it's well made the images the color choices the writing everything is really good the music is featured and the music featured here is by forest uh, lotteros you can get it here in the link here so it's uh 11 us dollars right now um and you can get it at crispycut.h.io